Good evening and welcome to Southern Hills this evening. We do want to extend a special welcome to all of our guests and visitors tonight and also welcome to those of you joining us via live stream. Um, few, I hope everyone had a chance to pick up a, a bulletin on the way in. If not, there's still plenty of copies left back in the back foyer. Just a few announcements we'd like to highlight. We do want to remember all of our members who are recovering and suffering with, uh, with the COVID-19 virus. And also Bonita Pearson, Paige Watson's grandmother, fell on Monday and required four staples in her head. Today, she and her son tested positive for the, for the COVID virus. So we want to remember them in our prayers. Um, we also extend our sympathy to Peggy Loggins and her family on the passing of her brother, Farrell Owens. Uh, visitation was today, or was Tuesday, um, a couple of days ago. Um, and then uh, upcoming events coming up. Um, tonight, everyone will remain in the auditorium for, for our worship service. Also, our KFC holiday party is coming up December the 4th, uh, 5.30 p.m. More information is on the announcement page. So if you didn't pick one up, I encourage you to do that. If you have any questions, see Cody Lovett. Also, the next Ladies Dig Deep devotional will be here at the building Tuesday, December the 1st at 7 p.m. And Dana Glasscock has more information about that if you need to, uh, if you have any questions. The ladies' Bible class will resume their class on Wednesday, December the 2nd at 10 a.m. here in the auditorium. Um, and that is taught by Linda Cottrell. Um, back, I, I guess, a couple of weeks ago, Garrett Comer was baptized into Christ. And as we traditionally do, I have a, a Bible for Garrett. So, Garrett, if you'll come up here, I'll hand you your Bible. And those are the announcements that I have. If you would, bow with me in prayer as we begin. Father in heaven, we thank you for the day that you have blessed us with. We're thankful for this time of thanksgiving as our country stops and focuses on the things that we are most thankful for. We pray that, that we look at those constantly as, as, member, as children of yours, that we look at what you have blessed us with. Father, we pray that everything that we say and do is done in accordance with your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. Good evening. It's good to see you all tonight. Our first song tonight will be number 990. 990. We'll sing this song through twice. reading and prayer, we'll sing number 888. Thank you, Lord.
Tonight's scripture reading will be 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 2 and 3. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. We give thanks to God always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers, remembering without ceasing your work of faith, labor of love, and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of our God and Father. Let us pray. Dear Lord, our Father in heaven, we're so thankful for this day that we can come here and worship thee tonight, and we're so thankful for our Lord and Savior Jesus and all he's done for us. And dear Lord, be with the church here at Southern Hills and help us to grow and be example to the community and be with all our elders and deacons and all that they do and be with all of us as church members and help us to live as we should and be the Christian example to all those around about us. And dear Lord, be with our sick and be with Paige Watson's grandmother and she fell on Monday and dear Lord, be with her and her husband and they have the coronavirus and watch over them and be with all our church members that have the coronavirus and bless them and heal them. And dear Lord, we pray that this coronavirus can go away soon and we be more have a more of a normal life as we once did. And dear Lord, uh, be with all those that's lost loved ones and be with uh, Peggy Loggins' family and the passing of her brother and be with them and their family. And Dear Lord, guide us through this day and forgive us all our many sins and help us just to be your children and do what's right. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. If you're using the psalm book tonight, you can mark number 667. We'll sing that at the end of Garrett's lesson. And before the lesson, let's stand and sing number 598. 598. We'll sing the first and last verse. Good evening. It is good to be with you guys tonight, the night before Thanksgiving. I talked about Thanksgiving a little bit on Sunday and the idea of giving thanks to God. One of the things I think is interesting, though, is that while we certainly are to be a people about giving thanks to God, one of the things we recognize as we read throughout Scripture is that God's not the only one we give thanks to, um, or not the only one we give thanks for. As a matter of fact, God throughout Scripture talks about looking around and seeing your brethren and being thankful for them. I think we're going to have a good example of that tonight. Uh, what we're going to see in our study tonight is basically Paul's sharing with the church in Thessalonica why he's thankful for them and expressing to them his gratitude 
for them and, and for what they do and, and what their work is. Uh, interestingly, as you get towards the end of the book in 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18, uh, he tells that not only is he doing that, but, but it's actually something he wants all people doing. He says, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God through Christ Jesus for you. And so what God's will is for you and for me is that we be a people of thanksgiving. Be people who look around and, and see what's going on around us and look outside of ourselves and look at the work that other people are doing, the struggle that other people are going through, the faithfulness that other people have, and recognize that, see it, and appreciate it, and be thankful for it. And so when Paul starts his letter— to the church of the Thessalonians, he says this in verse 2, we give thanks to God always for you, or for all of you, constantly mentioning you in our prayers. Now, if you're constantly mentioning the church in your prayers, and giving thanks constantly to the church in your prayers, kind of what necessarily is, is implied by that is that you're constantly thinking good things about the church and you're constantly thinking of reasons to be thankful for them. Now, what I know about the Thessalonians is this, is that they weren't perfect people, right? Because they are people. And so what he could have done is that he could have looked at the Thessalonians and come up with all the reasons that he shouldn't be thankful for them. He could have looked at the Thessalonians and some of the things that they were doing because they were humans and, and because they were flawed individuals and, and found reason to complain about them, found reason to be disappointed in them, found reason to rebuke them. But no, he says, no, I'm, I'm constantly giving thanks to God for you. Truth is this, and, and, and I'll say to you, you can say to me, if I wanted to, or if you wanted to, we could all find things in each other to complain about. I mean, there's, every one of us is flawed, right? So like you could look at me and you could find things in me to say, God, he should be better here. God, he, he falls short here. God, his thinking's not right here. God, his actions aren't perfect. And we could all do that with each other. But Paul's got a different mindset. Sure, he could look at things the Thessalonians did that they could get better at. But he says, no, what I'm constantly doing, what's constantly on my mind, what I'm constantly bringing before God is my thanksgiving. I'm looking at the good. And, and I think that we should learn a lesson from that, that, that we need to be people who look not to complain, not to bicker, not to murmur, not to find fault, because we could all do that. But, but instead of doing what so many choose to do, let us be like Paul and look and say, what can I be thankful for? What are they doing that's good? How can I go before God constantly? And mention these people in my prayers with thanksgiving. You know, what he'll do is he'll actually go on and get a little more specific about it. Like, what is he bringing up? He says this next. He says, remembering before our God and Father your work of faith. Okay, so uh, we know this. Uh, Christians are called to work. There are things we do, right? That there are things that need to be done. Some of us are teachers, uh, some are preachers, right? Some are elders, some are deacons, some visit people, some um, encourage, some make meals for people. Like, th there's all kinds of work that the church is involved in. Um, and the, the interesting thing about that is, is like when a person works, there's, there's different things that can motivate a person to do work for the Lord. And so he says, like, I, what I'm thankful for in you and what, what I bring up before God is that your work is, is driven by your faith. So at the end of the day, that's why we want to work. That's why we, it's not for recognition. It's not for money. It's not for, uh, uh, you know, human appreciation. Or, no, at the end of the day, I want my faith to be what drives my work. That, that I believe in Jesus and I know who he is and, and he's my king and Lord and I want to please him and glorify him. And, 
and I want to work for that. And what Paul says is like, when I look at the church, what I see is a bunch of people doing a lot of different works. And, and it's all because they love Jesus and they believe in him. And, and that's, that's changed them and that, that's altered their behavior. They do things that they typically wouldn't have done. They act in ways that other people in the world don't act. They, they're good for people. They visit people and they help people in their need. And, and, and they're all doing that because of this belief that they have. And it's a common belief that's found within the church is that like we're servants of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that belief motivates us and moves us to work. And like, if that's true for you and it's true, like there's something to be thankful for, isn't there? Like, don't you appreciate when people help you accomplish something? We're all working towards a common goal. And, And there's something to be thankful for about that. Whether you're a teacher or, or, or you, you serve in some other different way. Maybe you're just, uh, maybe you encourage. Maybe you visit. Maybe you make meals for something. Like, you're, we're all working and helping each other and, and, and trying to accomplish. And it's because we share a common faith. And th- there's reason to thank God for that. That there are people in this world, there are people I'm surrounded by, who are moved by the same things I'm moved by. Who, who are moving towards the same place that I'm moving towards. And he doesn't stop with that. I actually like what he goes on to say. He says, and the labor of love. The word labor and the word work are, are, are pretty similar. The difference is, is labor always suggests challenge to it. All right, work is something that, that you might like, you might not like. There's things that I do for the Lord that I, I rather enjoy doing for the Lord. Now I say, like, my primary work is, is a teacher and a preacher. And believe it or not, I actually enjoy it. I do. I like writing lessons. I like studying. I, I like putting lessons together. I, I like presenting them. Like, I, I enjoy that. It's work. But, but there's other things that I'm asked to do and that we're all asked to do that sometimes we don't enjoy. I'd rather do something else. And, and that's why it's laborious. That's why it's hard. All right, Paul worked, but Paul labored. Like he did things that were hard for him to do. And and when he shared the gospel in Thessalonica, like what he did is he shared, and we'll see in a moment, like these people received the word in much affliction. Like they suffered the way Paul did for his faith. And yet they kept living that life. I would say labor, like you want to know what labor is. There's a reason they call a woman going into birth. They, they call it going into labor. Why? Because what she's about to do is really hard. It's really difficult. It hurts. It's challenging. It's, it's just not fun. But you know what I've always found interesting is, is not necessarily how many moms there are, but how many women not only have one, but another child. And you're like, don't you remember the pain? Like, you have the one. I saw, I saw the pain in your eyes. And like, I saw how much it hurt. But you decided to have it again? Like, why did you decide to do that? It's a labor of love. In order to do something really challenging, twice, you, you got to have some love to it. And so what he's saying is like, okay, you're working, but you're not just working, like you're working at hard things and you're doing challenging things and very difficult things, things that aren't always fun to do. And yet you keep doing them. And the reason you keep doing them and the reason you don't give up is because of your love. Look, and again, like it, it, we're united not only in a common faith, but in a common love greatest command that God has given people is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. To love your neighbor as yourself. God's people are people of love. We love our God. We, we love our brethren. We love our neighbors. And, and that alone is reason to be thankful. I'm thankful that y'all love me. 
I don't mean, and, and, and I recognize like we all have our faults, but like I have felt so loved by the church like throughout my life. And I'm just, I'm thankful for that. And we should be thankful for that. And, 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 and like, not only do you love me and do I love you, but like we love our God. And, and, and what's most important in this world to me is what's most important in this world to you. Like, and that's reason to be thankful. Right? And he goes on from there. He says, in steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. The idea of steadfastness uh, is, is basically the idea of, of like a, a continuance, right? It's, it's a not giving up. It's a keep on keeping on. And the idea is that, that and we'll see it a moment in, a, in a moment here again, that, that these people like struggled in their faith. That like Paul, they, they were heavily persecuted for their faith. And yet... They kept their faith. And, and they had this hope set out in front of them. If you read First Thessalonians and pay any attention to it at all, one thing that's obvious is that Paul keeps bringing up this conversation of the second coming of Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, interesting fact, you might or might not know this before, but at the end of every chapter discusses the second coming of Christ. Look at the last two verses of chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, chapter four, and then look there, right there at the end of chapter five. And in every chapter, he ends it with talking about the fact that Jesus is coming again. That's what the book is like really about, is that our Lord is coming, and, and I believe that, and you believe that. And that hope we have is what keeps us faithful to God. And again, it's the same hope. We have the same faith, the same love, the same hope, and that's what like ties us together and brings us together. And Paul, as he writes to them, says, look, I'm, I, I thank God constantly because you have the same faith I have and is, and is leading you to work. You have the same love that I have. And for that reason, you're laboring and, and going through challenging things. And, 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 I, and I love you and I'm thankful for you because you have the same hope that I have. And and that's causing you to remain faithful throughout these challenging times and have the steadfastness and you just won't give up. But, but what he goes on to say here is interesting because as if that's not enough, he says this also, for we know, brothers, loved by God, that he has chosen you. Why is he thankful for the church? Well, they have the same work. They have the same love. They have the same hope. But when he looks at God's church, he's looking at God's people. He's looking at people who, who God has looked at this world and says, those are my people. And, and he's just thankful to be with them and to be numbered with the chosen of God. Interestingly, and it I, I really bothers me, I hate how we are so sometimes afraid of using the language that the Bible uses. I don't know why. We don't like to talk about being the chosen or the elect of God, even though the Bible says that. And the reason we don't like it is because people have kind of twisted and, and, and distorted what that means, right? And, and, and the idea is not that, like, out of no, uh, no rhyme or reason that God just said, hey, you're mine and you're mine and you're mine and all you other people aren't mine. There's nothing you could do about it. Like, the Bible never presents that idea. But, but the idea of being the elect of God or the chosen of God is exactly what he goes on to say. Why are they the chosen of God? Because our gospel came to you not in word, only in word, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit. And with full conviction for, or, or you know, what kind of men we proved to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord. For you received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. So why are they God's chosen people? Why are they the people of God? It's because when Paul preached to them, 
They didn't think, it, think of it just as, as Paul giving them some message. They heard those words and recognized they're the words of God. And because they're the words of God, it didn't matter how much somebody hurt them or persecuted, like they held on to it. It's God's word and I'm going to follow it. They received it in much affliction. They received it with full conviction. They received it with joy and like they, they, they took it and, and they just like ingested it into themselves and they started to live it and follow it and obey it. And, and that word started to change them and alter them and change their behaviors to where they imitated now Paul, but not only him, they also became imitators of Jesus Christ. So like Jesus loved people, they loved people. As Jesus was kind, they were kind. As Jesus stood for truth, they stood for truth. They started to imitate him. And what happened is that the example they were following in Paul and in Jesus Christ, like they started becoming that example to people in Macedonia and Achaia. So people in Macedonia and Achaia would see the Thessalonians and they would say, these are the people of God and they received word from them and they learned from them and they started to follow Jesus because of them. And, and he says, that's why you're God's people. That's, that's why he chose you. It's because you became people who received his word and followed his word and, 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 and you did so in much affliction. Like no matter what happened, you're going to follow this and do this and, and be this type of a person. Um, and you'll become examples and have become examples to, to other people because of it. Guys, what I want you to notice is this is that throughout this section of scripture that we looked at, Paul says, look, I've, I give thanks to God constantly. Like I make mention of you in my prayers and I do so because, because I remember your, your work of faith. I remember your labor of love. I remember your patience or steadfastness of hope. And I know that you're the people of God. And that's reason that we should give thanks to God. Guys, and I just want to say this as, as we kind of draw the lesson to a close. I thought about today what exactly I wanted to, to talk about in, in this lesson right before Thanksgiving. And, and I chose this, this lesson for a reason. I, ch I chose this passage for a reason. And, and I think I chose this passage for, for the reason because I think in some way it helps me express what I feel when I think of this congregation. Now, I've been here for almost a year. I don't know if you guys recognize that. Like, we're, we're getting right close to a year that I've been here. And it's been a weird year, right? I mean, it's just been, it's been kind of a wild year and different than any year I've ever been around. Like, there's things that have come up that I'm like, I don't know how to handle it. Like, do you know how to handle it? Like, like we, we, we kind of struggle to get our way through this year. We're trying to do right. Sometimes it's different. And yet, in the midst of it all, what I've seen and what I've noticed is people who are working doing all kinds of different things. Like we've been put in some situation, we've been asked to do things we've never done before, but, but I've seen people step up and work and do what they can to, to help each other, to, to help the church. I've seen people labor, right? They, they've they had to put themselves in, in situations they didn't really want to put themselves in. And do things they didn't really want to do that were hard and difficult, and yet they did it. Why? Because they love God enough. Because they love his church enough. I've seen people persevere. I've seen some people go through some difficult things, and yet remain faithful throughout it all. And what I know when, when, I'm, when I'm with you guys is that I'm with God's people. people who have received the word and, and, and they're trying to let that word like impact them and change them into the people of God. And I've seen that. And, and I just want you to know that I'm thankful for it, that I thank you. And I thank God for the example you've been to me and the example I know you've been to many others. And, and I'm thankful for your work. 
I'm thankful for your labor. I'm thankful for your steadfastness. And I'm thankful for you being the people of God, receiving the word of God the way you had and, and letting that impact you and change you. And so as, as I approach this day of Thanksgiving, I'm, I'm certainly thankful to God for all that he's done. I'm thankful for him being, as we talked about on Sunday, the rock of our salvation. But I'm thankful for his people as well. Thankful for the impact you've had on my life. I'm thankful for the impact you've had on my family's life. I'm thankful for the impact you've had on so many's lives in, in, in our community and the good that you're doing. And I pray for your continued faithfulness, and I thank you for your faithfulness. Uh, if there's anyone in here tonight who's not yet a Christian— not yet a child of God who hasn't yet received the word of God and let it impact them and change them and, and commit themselves to Jesus Christ. We'd love to help you do that. If we can pray for you this evening, if we can study with you, if we can baptize you, if there's anything we could do to help anybody in here get their life right with God, we certainly want to help you do that. And if we can, we encourage you to sit on one of the front rows while we stand and sing this invitation song. Would you be free from the evening. It's been a pleasure to worship with you, Garrett. Thank you for the lesson. We're so glad that all of you could be here tonight. And Garrett, I think we can speak on behalf of the congregation. We are glad that the book outs are here this year. We're thankful for you guys. Uh, I actually asked Mike to change our song tonight in light of uh, Garrett's lesson to A Common Love, number 842. We'll, uh, we'll close with this song and then be dismissed in a closing prayer. Pray with me, please. Our dearest and gracious Heavenly Father, Father, we truly are thankful. We'll thank, we're so thankful for Jesus, Father, and the great example of faithfulness He set before us, Father, and for His love for us. Father, we're thankful for the body that meets here, and we're so thankful for our elders, Father, for leading us and guiding us. Please continue to grant them wisdom and insight, Father. And Father, for our deacons, and for all of us fathers that are members, we're so thankful that we have this place and these brothers and sisters.
to surround us and love us, Father. Father, help us to love one another more. Help us to be thankful, Father, and help us to let our light shine. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.